It's the week of April 30th. We've got your task form previews coming up. Monday, we've got a 13 slope with an uplift, a reptilian two, a shrinking mountain, and a Zion. Two tasks we want to focus on are single leg bucks and anaconda. The first one is single leg bucks. Um, it's got its name from the first task with both feet is called big bucks or bucks because it, in my head, it looked like a bucking bronco, like trying to get the person off its back. So you'll be kicking the plate backwards like a big buck, but you're going to be pushing off of one leg, landing on that one leg, standing on that one leg. Okay, so. It's a little sticky in here, so it's not going to go as far and it's going to be a little bit harder. You know that if you're at the swamp or any, any of the turfs on a, a, a humid day. So I'm going to start over here, which is closer to the mic. You want to put your <clears throat> plate always on any of the big bucks or any reverse plate push on the inside of the plate, never on the outside or on top of the ridge. But you have two places that you can put it. You can put it on the, the back lip or you can put it on that little ridge, that little, I call it a peace sign. You can put it on those two as well if you want. What you're gonna do for single leg bucks is you're gonna be on one foot. This off leg needs to be in the air. It needs to be not touching any part of your body um, or resting on the turf. I'll show you kind of the, the misinterpretations in a second. And then your hands should be really, really close to the plate. What you're going to do is kind of get that knee low to the turf. You're going to explode backwards, land in the plank position, and then jump and stand up. Or if you don't want to jump, you can crawl back, stand up. Or there's actually a third one if you're able to. Let's say you're pushing back. You can push back and land at the same time. It's kind of hard to do it without the play. I'll show you what I mean uh, this way. So it would be like this and land. You can do those three types of uh, lands and standing. Those are all three are okay. Now the way it's misinterpreted is a few different things. One is landing and then just going to the knees and standing back up. We don't want to do that. We don't want you to have to use your knees and push off the leg to stand up. We want you to try to Work on your balance, work on your coordination, stick the landing, use your core and stability. Uh, another way you don't want to do it is just set, setting that like off foot uh, down too early or landing on that foot. Some people will do this and they'll kind of, and they'll push, they'll land on the wrong one. Okay, so there's that. Another thing you want to focus on, making sure your hands are close to the plate, like I mentioned before. It shouldn't be out here because you're not going to get any real power or explosiveness if your hands are too far away from the plate. It's going to be harder to get the upper body grounded and, and, and steady and st uh, firm before you, you're able to push the plate back, but really you're going to cover more ground if your hands are close to the, the plate. We call that antler ears because your hands are making antlers on the plate. And then um, an another thing we really want to focus on is not using your off foot to initiate the push. Now this one takes a, a really critical eye to, uh, to really see people when they're doing it. Um, it, it actually, it goes, I guess, unnoticed, I would say, pretty frequently by most pros. And, and I may just be bringing it to light for the first time right now. But people will get their plate started. Look where my, I don't know if you can see it. <clears throat> Look where my off foot is right now. So this is the on foot because the, the foot's on the plate, but my right foot is touching the turf and some, will, some people will make it look like they're starting to push with one foot, but really they're starting with their toe, getting it moving, and then they go up. If we allow that, that that's a different exercise. I mean, it could be a different exercise because you're allowed to get, you're able to get a lot more momentum on that push. So make sure you're not uh, pushing off of that foot too soon. And that would also apply to something like MFT, but we can explain that another day. Anaconda. Anaconda is one I get asked a lot on how to do it correctly. It is an inchworm where you fling the plate forward, uh, and that's pretty much it. You're throwing it forward with your toes, landing on your feet, walk to the plate, and just start it over again. 
It's called anaconda because I was thinking of uh, an inchworm, but a big inchworm would be an anaconda, which is a huge snake. Um, I would say the number one thing on this is actually your shoes. If you don't have a good quality pair of outdoor tennis shoes with a strong toe and a stiff uh, sole, it, it's very tough to do. And it may not even be possible for you to do it if you're wearing something like a minimalist shoe or a running shoe. So you're going to do your inchworm, and I, I don't need to explain too much of that because that's a separate task. But you're getting in your inchworm position, toes inside the ridge. You're going to crawl out into a plank, but simultaneously you're going to use that momentum of your crawl to fling the uh, plate forward. So it looks like this. Crawl, and you're flinging it forward. Okay. Now, where I see people do this uh, incorrectly or don't get it very far is they pause here. They pause and then they try to get it going. Now when I teach initiation, and I'm sure most of your pros have done this, when, when you do inchworm for the first time, many people come to that plank position, stop and pull. It, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just gonna make it harder for you to initiate that movement. Um, so you really wanna use the crawl, that little explosive momentum of your crawl into the push. So if I'm gonna come forward at you, I actually do a little more forceful crawl going forward, as long as I'm like safely catching myself to get that momentum to drive it forward, okay? Now, I also stress to people that you bring your knees like this way, like up and straight, rather than just straight or just up, because you, you wanna try to get those toes off the, uh, the plate quickly enough that it, you're not gonna get your heel or anything caught on it, and it's, it's not gonna stop the momentum or stop the plate as it's going. But also because I try to really focus on this part. When I get to this part here, I'm trying to be all on my upper body, really light on my toes, and I'm bringing my hips upward in the air and like almost doing like a crunch. So I crunch in the air, but I'm trying to like pull really hard forward and up at like a 45 degree angle, like towards the ceiling. And I try to let my feet stay on the plate to the very last minute because I'm trying to like release it. Like in baseball, if you were to release the ball out in front as a pitcher, you have more accuracy, a little bit more power. It's the same thing with a plate. You want to crawl and wait to the very last minute to re release it. Now, that requires a lot of flexibility, but that flexibility comes by doing those first, earlier, easier exercises the right way. Uh, I think that would be it for Anaconda. Let's move on to Tuesday. We're on Tuesday now. We got a big serpent. This is designed, uh, today's workout was designed by Jen DiMercurio, the owner of Shelby Township. Good little mixture of tasks in there. She put some things that you do all laterally to start with on the one row. You got upper body, lower body, and I believe drags and throws and whatnot. Two exercises, Pagodo and Hang 10. Pagodo, in my opinion, is one of our most complete exercises using your entire body. You got lats, core, legs, you name it. It is called Pogoto, P-O-G-O-T-O, -O, because it's three tasks in one. That's Potty Shot, Gorgon, Toro. Okay, stationary exercise that you'll do in each end zone. You'll start with your feet on the line. The line's behind me, so you won't see it, but you squat down, good squat. Hands on the back part of the plate, because you're gonna do a potty shot. Get it out there. Don't just do it a little bit, get it out. Crawl out and then reach, and it's always gotta be on this ridge, pull it back, reverse the crawl back, and stand up, okay? A few things that get misinterpreted are the push. People won't go out all the way. So they'll get to this part, and they'll be like, oh shoot, I didn't get it that far. Okay, I'll grab it from here, I'll grab it from the hole. Now we wanna do the Toro part. Remember the Toro, you're grabbing from this part. So if you only get it this far, Push it out to really get a stretch. When you do that, you're using your lats so much more to stretch, get it, and pull it back. You should feel that. Uh, keep your hips square to the floor, okay? If I get close, people without the core strength, many times they'll be opening up the hip that's uh, doing like the pulling and your hand's not on the turf because they're trying to compensate because the one arm that's holding them is, is gonna be stronger, obviously, for your core. 
Still try to stay really flat towards the ground. Try not to be like this. Also, when you throw it, try not to have your butt in here. You should be nice and flat. Pull it back. You can pull it back all the way, or if you didn't get it back all the way, as you crawl back, land the heels on the, on the turf, so you do like a nice reverse squat upward. You can push the plate back a little bit if you want to to set it up for your next potty shot. Um, another thing that is kind of petty on my, on my uh, form critiquing, but I think it's important to just do things uniformly, is you do your potty shot. Let's say you're on your last one. So we do a rep of six. We do reps of six. Um, you crawl out. You're on your, you're on your sixth one. You pull it back. If this is your last one, don't pick up the plate from here and continue on. Stand up all the way. So, you know, you crawl back, stand up, and then pick it up. All right, because that is part of the movement. It's just another squat instead of picking up to Tarzan. And then also, when you carry it down to the other end zone, you'll do your other hand for Toro backwards. So when you're doing that, you're, you crawl out and you pull with a different arm. Hang 10, fairly basic exercise. It's called hang 10, and it's, it's called hang, but I think of it as hang 10, like you're surfing, and that's really where the name came from, because I feel like it looks like a surfer, which I know this is probably like bad form. If you surf, you probably know that, but you're, you're actually like touching the wave. Like I just picture a surf, surfer touching a wave doing that when they're doing it. But it's a squat jump where you're gonna jump over the end zone line and touch the end zone line 10 times. Close stance squat, so you're sitting down. Knees aren't gonna to go too far over the toes. Here, butt back. Make sure your heels don't come off the turf. You're gonna to touch the ground, jump tall, touch the ground. Okay, again, heels don't come up off the ground. When you do this, really important to keep your eyes straight ahead. So that means you're gonna be facing like with the line facing the wall or the window at your turf. You're gonna to touch, come up tall all the way, broad shoulder and down. What we want to avoid are a few things. The, the head looking down towards where you're jumping because chances are when you do that, you're just looking to your destination instead of focusing on the exercise that you're doing. Any of the touches, you should be looking down, you should be looking up. If, you, if, if you're looking down, you're probably gonna be hunched over. You're not gonna come up to a full, open, stand-up position. And um, I, it, it just, just stand up all the way. We were, a while back, when Stephanie used to work, St. Clair Shores, we talked about getting those like googly eyes that you see in like windows and stuff for Halloween and put them in the end zone so you have like something to focus on when you're doing it. I tell you, if you just lift up your chin and keep your eyes up, you're gonna correct most of the problems. The other thing is, um, I forgot, I'll edit this. Oh, the other thing is to make sure that you are not like bending goofy when you're, when you're touching the turf. So if this is the line here, make sure you're not bending, even if you're still squatting, you're not bending at the torso it's still straight, you wanna be up and down. Okay, just like that. That's Tuesday, that's a serpent. All right, Wednesday now you've got a crossover plate push road runner. If you happen to be looking at your motherboard or the workout, XPP stands for crossover plate push. Uh, two exercises we're gonna focus on today are spadoto, which is a new task for everybody, and then arachnid. Spadoto is a task that is again, just like Pagodo the other day, uh, we are taking three exercises, morphing them together to come up with a different name. Um, it stands for spikes, reverse bulldog, that's where the D-O comes from, and T-O, again, Toro. So this also came from Susie Ram, who's a member here, who started her Toro, yeah, Toro, her first one, like a, a, like a spikes into the Toro position, and I liked it a lot to the point where I'm like, you know what, well, let's just make that an exercise. So you'll start with your spikes, which is a different task we won't explain. You're gonna go back, spike it, right to a reverse bulldog. You'll wanna time this well, 
because if you, if you don't time your you know, reverse bulldog, it's going to be hard to go into a spike. So however it is that you want to do that, that's what you're going to do. Since it's our first day doing this task, as, it, as this would be with any task for the first time, we got to give it a little time to evaluate as, as pros. We need to know if it's difficult for members or if it's easier than we thought. We have to switch up the values, but we also figure out how it is interpreted. So really today was just about me showing you how to do that um, spadoto. And then I'll probably come back on sometime in the future and say, look out for these you know, misinterpretations. Uh, this is a way to improve it. But for now, it is just doing your spike, which is your hands on the turf with one hand, push off, pull back, reverse bulldog back to the plate, continue on. One hand that way, the other hand back. Arachne is one of my favorite tasks, and it is a dead-legged ball and chain, which is what we call it. It's keeping the hip low, stiff, and locked. Whatever, that foot that's on a plate, it's gonna be low, stiff, and locked. Dragging it, dragging the plate along the turf while you're doing like a bear crawl. Good for the hip flexors, great for the core, a little upper body in there as well. And um, it, 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 it's very much like an inchworm too, because it'll help you do that. And it really works on flexibility. It's called arachnid because I think of, an arachnid is a spider, which you probably know. But it, it, for me, it thinks of a, like a spider crawling down its web towards its prey that it's caught in the web. So that's what I think of when I do it. Start with your foot on the front ridge of the plate and assume this position. So what I do is immediately I get in what we call like the, the rampage or razor position. Elbow kind of inside that knee or shoulder inside that knee. And you're gonna crawl and just drag the plate. It looks simple enough, or it looks goofy, but it looks simple. But the key is to keep that hip low and square towards the floor and maximize your distance with the front leg. The front leg is the secret to this whole thing. It is pushing you off, propelling you down the field. Okay? If you're not able to get it too far, you're not going to go very fast or far. I'm going to back up and kind of go through a couple of times on the frame just to show you the speed at which I go because I'm able to get uh, more distance on each one. Okay. All right. So I feel like I have training wheels on my back leg, keeping it low, but I don't stop my rhythm. I don't stop my crawl or my momentum. And at the very last minute with my front foot, I push off, almost like doing a plate push or a jack box or something like that. But you want to make sure that you're not turning it into a ball and chain, which is where you're bringing your knee and bending at your hips to bring the plate up. And then just like your ball and chain, the plate can only go as far as your hands. I guess it's not going to matter too much with an arachnid because the plate or the knees locked and the legs locked, so it's not ever going to get really close to that front hand. But you just want to make sure that you're not uh, moving your hand out of the way to get further. So that's going to be arachnid on Wednesday, your crossover plate push roadrunner. That Thursday, a Mountain 2, a Zion 2, and a U2. We're looking at bovine and mantis, two of our main staples, I would say, of Cyphus. Bovine is a single leg bulldog, essentially. And when people ask us about the difference between the hands, we call we have two things. We have bare hands and bulldog hands. Bare hands is crawling, bulldog hands is pouncing, both, both hands uh, moving at the same time. Now, this exercise, initially, I feel like people have a tough time with it, but it ends up being one of the preferred crawls on things like primates. You're gonna to wanna to get on one leg, hands kind of like right here in front of you. You're just gonna go forward, bring that back foot to your hands, repeat. You're just gonna do that the same way, same leg all the way down, switch the leg on the way up. Now what we wanna focus on and make sure that we're not tweaking is making sure that the hands are together. I, I see this a lot as people get fatigued, is their hands are ever so slightly staggered. 
So I would interpret that as more of a gargoyle, a single leg bear crawl, even if their hands are a little bit different. And if they're staggered and they're still kind of landing um, at the same time and leaving at the same time, the hands shouldn't be staggered. You want to have them together as best you can. Also, similarly, like I, I mentioned a second ago, the way they land and the way they pick up, even if they're together, like on the same plane, but one's kind of like galloping, that's also what I would consider to be more gargoyle-y than a bovine. Uh, some of the things that you want to do to make this efficient and effective is have the weight more on like your butt and uh, your leg here so you can get up, so you can be confident on your upper, bo upper body and uh, obviously with more flexibility you're going to be able to do this better, but uh, just have your weight evenly distributed because if it's too far forward it's going to be really hard and if it's too far back you're not going to be able to get far with your upper body. So that's bovine and bovine's also, what is it, a cow? I don't know why I really named it that other than it starts with B-O like bulldog, I thought maybe it would trigger something, but now we got so many different tasks with a B. Maybe a little bit tough, but bovine hands, single leg bulldog. Mantis is a really important one. It is a scapular retraction, which means you're strengthening the muscles behind your shoulder blades or like in your shoulder blades and your back. Uh, we do not do many posterior back exercises in sight because a lot of things are in the frontal plane, meaning in front of your body and crawling. So we're hitting those, you know, the front parts of your shoulders and your chest, we're hitting that a lot. So things like Mantis and your BOR and stuff that really hit your back, you really want to focus on and not rush through them. Mantis, there's only eight reps in this because it should be slow, controlled, and methodical. Now, Mantis is called Mantis because I think it very much looks like a praying Mantis. You're going to get on your elbows in a plank position. And what you're going to do is lower yourself towards the turf at about this speed, come back up. Just like this, lower yourself, back up. That's about the speed you want to go. I usually time myself, I do at least 20 seconds, sometimes closer to 30 seconds. And you're lowering yourself by squeezing your shoulder blades. It's not just a lowering, like falling. Like so, I, Some people are able to actually, I don't know how they do it, but like get down without depressing their shoulder blades and, and, and getting towards the turf. In the beginning when someone's doing Mantis for the first time, I usually kind of explain it as a push-up on your elbows, but I don't really like calling it that because then it, it focuses on the getting up part, which is not as difficult as a push-up, but I mean it kind of achieves the point. You want to keep your head in line with your body pretty much. Make sure you're not going like this. Make sure you're also not sagging your hips. Okay, that's It's not that. It's Squeeze, back up. I tend to keep my elbows kind of like this, outward a little bit. Some people can do it straight up. It just feels better on my shoulders uh, to, to spread it out. And you just really want to slow down that movement and um, just focus on actually hitting those, those muscles behind your back. And uh, that's Mantis. We do it a single leg version and an abducted version. So if you ever hear that, it's just doing it on one leg or with an abduction. And that's Thursday, and we'll move on to Friday. We're looking at Friday, May the 4th right now, and that's the name of the circuit. Um, Joe Militello, who's on the podcast with me, trainer here, uh, he came up with a workout, May the 4th. It's a, it's a nod to Star Wars movies, which I've never watched one, but he's seen them all and is a big fan. Um, May the Force be with you, I think is what it is, May the 4th. Now we have a new task again today. It's called Tauntaun. And then we're gonna show you Anteater, which has kind of made a resurgence uh, in the last couple of weeks. So it kind of showed its face in a couple of circuits lately, which is a funny one. But actually both these tasks are funny. Tauntaun, honestly, I don't see us using much, if ever again. So we just wanna show you what it is. He and I were trying to come up with a task called Tauntaun because apparently it's this like myth mythical, creature, which I think a lot of them are in Star Wars, that's uh, like a horse and like a camel and a ram kind of all put into one. Um, but what you're going to do is kind of like Stampede and Twix, 
You're going to go straight down the field, but you're going to line your feet up. And the reason why I stumbled upon this movement as an exercise is because of Anteater, which I'll show you in a second. That's why I paired these up. You're going to go forward, kind of like shuffling like that. Okay? I'm going to go that way. Here. I'm like in a line, shuffling like that. You can feel it a little bit on your front leg. You're going to switch which foot's in front when you come back the other way. That's Tauntaun, pretty simple. It actually kind of fits with some of the stuff we do, like stampede, non-guard, and squibble. So it's, it's really not that bad. So now let's do anteater. Anteater, I call it anteater because for some reason I think it looks like an anteater crawling, but like backwards. It is like the arachnid that I showed you a couple clips ago where you're dragging the plate, but this time you're not going to have the plates. The plates, uh, the, the leg's going to be locked behind you. You're going to be doing a gargoyle, which I know this is a lot of tasks in one, but you're going to be crawling with one leg bent in front and the back leg's going to be straight and tap it. You're going to tap the turf. So here, crawl, tap, tap, tap. Let's switch legs on the way back. Tap, tap, tap. So if you saw, it kind of has a resemblance to arachnid, but I'm not as low. And I'm tapping in the way that almost that tauntaun, that new task, is. So as I'm going, I feel like I'm tapping, tapping, tapping. I think that if you're doing all those tauntauns, you're going to be able to do that anteater today. Be like, oh, it's the same thing. Because I feel like I'm lining my feet up when I do it. And it just kind of comes naturally after that. I, where, the, where the airs are in that one is still kind of tough to decipher because we don't do it very frequently. But what I, I do want to ward against is making sure that your normal mongoose is not an anteater. When you do a mongoose, you should be in this position. That knee, this knee right here, should be outside always of your hands. Okay, it should be right here. You should never have your upper body outside of your knee on a mongoose. Lately, I've seen an anteater being performed unintentionally on a mongoose to where people are crawling that back foot instead of being a uh, knee being bent like this, an open toe, it's turned and it's straight. And then the other, the other foot in front is still like lined up almost the back foot and it's inside of their arm, so, or inside of their, uh, yeah, inside of their arm. So sometimes people will do mongoose that should be like this, but instead it's like that, which is in fact an anteater. That's Friday, May the 4th. Okay, it's Cinco de Mayo at Site is Training now. Saturday, it's a slope of 35. We got another new exercise called Slam Strong. I actually think we've done it once which is a single leg hamstrung. And then I'm gonna show you SUP Madness, which really I just wanna focus on the movement of SUP. Slam strung is hamstrung with one leg. And we are gonna do it down to four rather than just do it to three, like we had debated. You're gonna put your heel in the closest lip of the plate. You're gonna lift your whole body up off the turf, make sure you're obviously not sitting down. And make sure your arms are even up. Pull in with the heel. Crawl back all the way to a flat, even position and, and pull in. Okay. Looks goofy, especially if you've never done Zaytus training and you're just watching this for whatever reason. Yeah, it looks goofy, but it's very, very effective. You're going to stand the one leg there, the other leg back. Um, some of the things that get misinterpreted or, or the natural uh, movement of things, you'd probably want to stagger your hands because it feels a little more natural, or not natural, feels like you're you don't want to crawl all the way out, so you might be like here, and then you want to pull. Really strive to keep it even. You're going to feel a lot in your triceps. I mean, I think slam strung is actually more, or hamstrung, is more of a tricep exercise than anything. Because you're supporting your entire body weight with it. And then the other thing is try to keep your off foot or leg straight and almost in line. The, the whole entire way. That's going to force you to use your abs a lot. I would say I feel my abs more, you know, a midsection more on that task than just about anything we do. 
I feel like I'm doing a reverse crunch every time I, I come back. So it's crawl back and a crunch and a crunch, which is hard to do that with just your foot on the turf. But that is uh, slam strong. I think you'll like it. Go slowly through it, focus on the form. Now, sup madness. Anytime you hear the word madness in a task, it means you're gonna be looking out to do a task at every line. We've got four lines in sightless training, line one, two, three, and four, end zones on the end. Um, so anytime you see madness, immediately think, okay, what's this task? I'm gonna do whatever task it says at each line. How many times does it say it? Okay, sups, we're doing five at each line. Sups stands for sit up plate push. Not everyone knows that, so it's sit up plate push. Usually you do 10 in each end zone, here we're doing five in each line. Now you can use the plate, and I would probably suggest it, on your toes for a counterweight. It's gonna allow you to do some sit-ups a little bit easier. We do not do many core exercises, no, take that back. We do a lot of core exercises inside this training. We don't do a lot of abdominal specific exercises like your crunches and sit-ups and leg lifts and all that because we don't want people to rush through them. And you're getting enough core work inside this training as is, but we do want to add these sit-ups to the mix. When we do them, we want to have our hands and elbows pinned against our body. We don't want to be throwing our hands. We don't want them to be up here. We definitely don't want to be pulling on our neck. So you're going to sit up, back down. As long as your back touches the ground, you're good to go. And then with sucks, you're going to push it after five to the next line, plate push, then do another five. The, the things we're, we're trying to steer against, again, you don't want to throw your hands because if you're throwing your hands, you're using momentum. That's an obvious exaggeration, but you don't want to do that. Another thing is, is keeping your hands here. Just keeping your hands here is moving your body's center of gravity towards the plate to where you're trying to crunch, which is making your uh, sit up easier. You don't want to pull in on your neck, blocking the airway, pulling, cranking on your neck's not good. You don't want to do this with your elbows, throwing yourself up, which is why we've come to the conclusion that this elbows into your body, not out in front. Everything is right here in your like chest area because it's keeping the heavier part back and you're not gonna use any momentum to get up. Now, another thing I think that would help get the most out of this task, keep your chin up. I keep my eyes on the ceiling, like in front of me, not like directly above, but like in front of me a little bit, because as soon as you tuck your chin, you're kind of doing the same thing a little bit, getting the gravity of your body forward a little bit, and um, you're also uh, just, you're kind of constricting your breathing and stuff, so you should want to focus on your breathing. So that's SUPS, Slam Strong was before that, Cinco de Mayo. Now we got Sunday. I realized that I just said that Cinco de Mayo, I'm sitting here wearing a St. Patrick's Day shirt that doesn't make much sense. But uh, Sunday we've got a slope of 29, we're facing a mountain two, an expanding mountain and a crossfire. We're looking at jackal and chicken, and that'll be the end of the week. Um, jackal, I, there's no rhyme or reason for why I named it that, uh, but a jackal is a weighted monkey crawl. Okay, so we know what the monkey crawl is if you've been doing it for a while, say this. We taught you jackal lope last week. Well, this one, you got both hands on the plate. You're gonna move it over, lift your whole body up, move it over, okay? You'll reverse it on the way back. Now, there are two ways to do jackal. And I have thought long and hard about making two exercises of the two ways to do it, which I do with a lot of different tasks. That's why we have bovine and gargoyle because there's a difference between crawling and pouncing with your hands. Well, there's two ways. One way is to do the drag, like I just showed you. Another way is to push it. I usually opt for the push. It, it catches your legs a little bit more. Definitely more cardio intensive, but you're gonna get it done a lot quicker. It's also more explosive. If you're doing the drag, you're gonna get more core. You're gonna get, a, it's gonna be slower. A little bit more core, a little more legs. There's no right or wrong way as of now, but there may be eventually a, I guess like a splitting of the, of the uh, species, if you will. So this right here is the push. 
here, push, push. Yeah. Let's break down those two, starting with the drag. With the drag, you have the plate kind of even up with you, maybe a little bit on the back side. You want to get pretty far forward uh, with your body, but notice that I'm not completely turning my body. You want to lift your entire body up at the same time. Try to get the front leg pretty far forward because that's going to cover some ground for you and just drag it across on a straight line. Try not to, to move it out. Now what people will do incorrectly with this is they will turn their entire body so they're going forward and they almost like push it like this and then they cross over. Big no-no is the crossover. And then they do this because then you're not really using your upper body for that brief second in the air. It should look just like monkey, which is this without the plate, like that. So with a plate, it's here, and then you're dragging the plate again. That's the drag version of a jackal. Now the push version, I start with it back further, and I keep this arm almost locked at all times because it's gonna like bring the plate with me. Once I get to about here, covered all that ground, I'm exploding off the front leg, a little bit the back one, and I'm gonna travel with it. So it looks like this, here, and then I try to get that front leg as far as I can. But I keep that front arm straight as I'm, I'm bringing the plate with me because if I don't, it's kind of hard to get the plate set up where you want it and then stick the landing. I don't know which way is better, but it's kind of a feel thing and a preference until we maybe split off those tasks. Um, same thing applies though with, with the push part. Make sure you're not turning and like turning into like a, a bulldozer all, all, almost. So that's Jackal, getting tired. Chicken, chicken is an upper body task. You'll see that we do it in a suicide pattern. Chicken is in the same family of your pinned, opened, kind of death row. But what you're doing is scapular retractions, like we do with a mantis, with a plate, walking a suicide. Um, it's called chicken for obvious reasons. When you're doing it, it looks like you're flapping wings. I remember the first day we did it a couple years ago. It looked ridiculous, but it was very effective. I think it's probably our mo most effective suicide carry. What you're gonna do is grab the plate, put it in like the pin position, right underneath the chin, and, oh, opens the other one too. So you're going from an open to a pin, constantly walking a suicide. So I'm gonna show you what it is from the side. I'm applying pressure to the plate, pulling out on the plate, pulling in and back, out, in and back, out, in and back. While I'm doing that, I'm squeezing back there you're going to feel a lot in your rear delts, back part of your shoulders, your scapula, and your trapezius, your traps. You're doing this the entire time. Same as Halo, you're trying to get three between each line. So you have a total of 36 flaps the entire time. This looks ridiculous, I'm sure. But pull it, apply pressure the entire time. Don't let the weight fall down as you're doing it. Pulling out and in, out and in. Make sure your hands are on the, on the plate, um, on the ridge of the plate. It's the only way I'll be able to keep it up. Make sure you don't let the plate slide down at all. As you get tired, don't let it come here because you're really not hit, hitting it, hitting your back. Keep it up here and back, just like that. And don't flap too fast. You shouldn't be trying to actually fly. Slow, controlled. If you do it right, I'm sure you're gonna have to take a break on your suicide. So that's your weekly form previews. Let's hit it this week, good luck.